All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on Rough Rider Modern Knives. So Rough Rider is a brand op owned by Smoky Mountain Knife Works that is well known for their traditional knives, uh, specifically value-friendly traditional knives like this, and then recently also the Rough Rider Reserve line, which is a little bit higher end, but still um, a, a budget type traditional knife. And um, they also have made modern knives for a long time, for, for a while, several years. Um, and the first one of their knives that I got was this knife. So this is the Rough Rider RR1989. And this was about $6, something like that. Um, not an expensive knife at all. And uh, it's, you know, an, a cool little knife. I, I got it just because of the, you know, pastel colors that it has here. Um, but it does have some issues. It's not perfectly centered. Um, it is an assisted opening and I had to adjust a little bit to get it to flip quite that well. I had to adjust the lock a little bit. It's tip down only, which I don't prefer. Um, so not a perfect knife, but at $6, I think a fun little knife and a good value. And I'm going to talk about the brand overall. So, um, kind of how the brand has evolved and how the value has evolved on the Rough Rider Modern Knives. So one thing you'll notice here right away is that Rough Rider has spelled their name differently in the past. So the box you saw at the beginning had Rider spelled with a R-Y and originally it was, or I guess they say originally it was R-Y and then for a while, for a long time, it was R-I like so. And um, some of the older modern, uh, older Rough Rider modern knives were similar to the one I just showed. So here's an example. This is the Rough Rider RR1826. And this knife was uh, only about $7.50 from Chicago Knife Works, where I got uh, most of these knives. And so it's an inexpensive knife, but again, it has some issues. It has some finishing issues, as you can see on the blade here. Um, it is a little bit tough to flip. Um, as you can see, you have to really uh, get a solid light switch push on that flipper tab and really push on the thumb stud, but it does flip open. Um, it's a frame lock and has this really cool uh, red lightning strike carbon fiber laminate handle. So it does have some cool features in that it's a frame lock and has that really unique look to it. Um, pretty classic tactical knife design with the drop point and the handle, but not perfect. And, you know, at $7.50, is it a good value? I think it's a good value, but um, not quite where they get to. So uh, that's a good example of an older um, Rough Rider modern knife. Another good example of that is this knife. So this is the Rough Rider RR1820. And uh, this one is a knife that was only $6.50. Uh, it's also assisted opening, but this one is um, doesn't really have finishing issues in that the, the handle is a pretty nicely uh, anodized blue um, aluminum. The pocket clip is actually pretty nice. It has a similar style to what we and Civivi knives use, but the action on this one is, is lacking. As you can see, if you give it a normal flip on the flipper tab, it just won't open. And if it does open the whole way, which is you have to really give a good wrist flip to get it to, it's not always going to lock up securely. Um, even with the thumb stud, because it's an assisted opening, I opened it the whole way with the thumb stud and it, it's not locked right now. So um, it definitely is... Uh, not perfect, and so much so that even though it's $6.50, it's not really something I would use or carry in this in this state with this action. Um, so I do think I'll contact, you know, either Chicago Knife Works or Smoky Mountain Knife Works uh, for a replacement or warranty. Um, so, you know, at $6.50, is this a good value? I, I don't think so. If you get a knife that you can't use, you can't carry, it's not a good value, no, no matter how inexpensive it is. Um, but then Rough Rider 
started to move in a little bit of a different direction. Now this knife is the Rough Rider RR1822, and you can see that they still did spell the name with the RI. But this knife has some of uh, some features that um, and quality that some of the more recent modern knives from Rough Rider have. So this knife, first of all, has this really nice sculpted or machined G10 handles, black G10 with red liners. Um, it has nice finishing on the blade with a two-tone look, which you'll see on several of the knives coming up. It has kind of a gray coating on the grinds. And um, one of the big features is that it has ball bearings. So this, this knife is about um, $8.50. Uh, I think sometimes a little bit more, but when I got it, it was about $8.50. And I do think that's what it is still on Chicago Knife Works. And um, for $8.50, you're getting um, G10 handles, true ball bearing action. As you can see, it drops closed, it flips really well, it um, opens with the thumb stud really smoothly, and it's well centered, it has a tip up pocket clip. Uh, now the blade still on almost all of these, except for the last one I'll show you, is uh, 440A steel. And 440A is definitely not a super steel. It's not even a mid-range steel, um, but it's easy to sharpen. I sharpened this one recently after some use, and it's definitely easy to sharpen and easy to use. So I think uh, at $8.50, this is a really, really great value. Um, it's a nice design. It has you know good action, good lockup, and really no issues with this, this knife. And Rough Rider kind of continued with that. So um, here is another knife from Rough Rider. This one is just a little bit more expensive at about $9.50, and this is the Rough Rider RR2043. Now this one has a frame lock. So the, the previous knife was a liner lock, this one's a frame lock, and um, it has, again, that some of the same features. That two-tone look on the blade as well as on the handle this time. It has machining on the handle in the steel, um, it has ball bearings, as you can see, it flips really well. It doesn't have um, a thumb stud like the previous one. It is smooth enough to drop closed, but because it's smaller, there's not quite as much space to drop it closed. Um, but it's still really smooth and um, still has the tip up pocket clip and locks up without any blade play even when you know unlocked, there's no side to side blade play and is actually almost perfectly centered as well. Um, so for $9.50, I think still just a really great value. You're getting you know, a nice little knife that's gonna be solid, be a good user. Not, not the most beautiful knife, not the most perfectly finished, obviously at that price, um, but you know, a real good value for a user at that price. And another example of that is the Rough Rider RR, uh, what is it, Two, 1983. So this one is actually a little bit less expensive. Um, it is a another liner lock. This one is about $8 right now. Um, and this one is also not assisted. It also has ball bearings. It is extremely smooth, drop closed. And you can see it has a similar two-tone look to it. The blade has, uh, um, coating on the grinds and satin on the flats. It has a two-toned aluminum handle with some machining in like a rock type uh, finish here on the handle. Now, not perfect. I do wish that the other side was also um, anodized uh, this gray color. I don't really know why it's not. Uh, it does have a nice pocket clip, locks up really solid and is a nice design. I like the design for in my hand and, you know, nice kind of modified drop point blade shape. Um, so just a really nice knife for the price, a really, really good value, I think. And um, I actually have two of these because I got one as a gift and they're both nice. So sometimes some, someone might say, well, you've just gotten lucky and, and gotten good examples of these inexpensive knives. But both of these are really nice, um, really, really nice. So I, I think that they're just doing a good job of these knives. And moving on a little bit higher in price. So this is the Rough Rider RR2193. And this one is a little bit more at about $13.50. So 
four or five dollars more than the previous couple and um it's a really nice knife i mean i i, I you know, I think some people are going to watch this and say, oh, you have bad taste in knives. It's, you know, they're just cheap budget knives from China. But I mean, yeah, it's only 440A steel. But for me on user knives, I like to be able to easily resharpen and repair edges. Yes, it's easy to resharpen uh, super steels when you have the right tools and know what you're doing. It's not really that easy to repair edges if you get chips or big rolls and things like that. Um, now on 440A, it's a lot easier. Of course, it will lose its edge a lot quicker, but you know, people you know who are into knives have a lot of knives and can rotate through them and sharpen them relatively frequently. And I just think it's a really nice knife. It has, again, ball bearings. This one is maybe the smoothest of them all. It is extremely smooth, very drop closed. Um, it has a very nice detent. I mean, like a, a really good snappy crisp feeling detent um, it locks up really solidly no blade placed side to side even when unlocked and it's relatively well centered maybe slightly towards the non-clip side but a really nice knife and i think still a, a really great value at that price um, now one consideration when you're getting up to this price because once it gets into that 15 dollars range not so much anymore, but there are some Kershaw knives in that range um, that, you know, are maybe $15, $20, especially when they're on sale. But really, Kershaw's, even the um, ones made overseas, uh, the more budget-friendly Kershaw's are a little bit more expensive than this knife now. Um, but there are some, especially when they're on sale, that you can get around this price. So a consideration, if you are thinking about getting a knife like this, is how does the Rough Rider warranty compare to the Kershaw warranty? or you know, any other budget knife manufacturer warranty. And Kershaw has a great warranty, and um, I think this is a good comparison here. Uh, Rough Rider, I've used their warranty on the um, traditional knives, and it's been a good experience. They have sometimes just replaced the knife, sometimes without me having to send the other knife in, um, and uh, they generally are willing to you know, help you out. So I think they do you know, stand behind the knives. And that's moving on to another knife here that I think is really interesting. So this knife is even a little bit more expensive at, um, let's see, $14.49 or about $14.50. But this knife has all of the features of the previous ones. It has really nice, high quality filling black G10 with red liners. It has very smooth ball bearings. It has um, a really nice design, this very traditional dagger design, and it flips really well. And even I've found that this, this can be used as like an Emerson wave. So you can catch it on your pocket as you pull it out and it will open automatically. Um, it has this cool fuller that goes along with the design. But one interesting thing about this knife, you can see also that it's pretty much perfectly centered. It has a nice tip up pocket clip, is that this knife is in they, they say, all, all information I found says that it's in T10 carbon steel, which is a non-stainless steel, a Chinese non-stainless steel that Rough Rider has used on some of their traditional knives previously. I have never used it, but it's unusual to see a carbon steel on a modern knife and even more so on a budget modern knife. So Spyderco does some carbon steels. Um, even um, bench made with M4 and things like that, uh, but really never on a budget modern knife. So it's really interesting to see a knife at under $15 um, having such a, you know, unusual and unique steel in a carbon steel on a modern knife. So very interesting, something I'm looking forward to using and seeing how it responds to, you know, how it patinas and things like that. And just a straight up nice knife, a nice pattern, a nice design, and something that I'm happy to have gotten. So I wanted to make this video just discussing these knives, discussing the Rough Rider modern knives in general, and how they have developed over the years. I do think Rough Rider has 
overall um, improve the quality of their knives, both these modern knives and their traditional knives. Um, but especially these moderns, I think these are underrated. I think people don't really talk about these that much, and I think that they should. I think that they're worth um, being a part of the discussion on budget knives, especially for people who do want to, you know, keep their knife purchases um, to a pretty, you know, low budget. Uh, you really can and still get some very nice knives in these Rough Riders. I've been personally enjoying them. I've been getting them to give as gifts because you can give someone a good knife without spending too, too much money. And um, I think that they're worth checking out. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, uh, go ahead and hit the uh, thumbs up. Also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got videos on other knives like this and knife related topics. And if you do, hit the bell for notifications so you know when I post new videos. Also check out my uh, social media, all at Knife Thoughts, and my website, knifethoughts.com, where I post articles on knives like this and knife-related topics. And as always, last but not least, don't forget to go out and do good.